It's February 1942. The Pacific War is barely two months old and the Imperial Japanese Army is on the move. Having swept through Thailand and Malaya, Japanese forces are fighting their way towards the big British naval base in Singapore. Standing in their way, a collection of battle-weary British, Australian and Indian troops. They were to stand no chance against a decisive and well-organised enemy. With Allied air and naval defences depleted, Singapore City was quickly surrounded. Water supplies were running low and its one million residents suffered constant Japanese bombardment. Late in the day, on February 15, 1942, with no options left, British Commander Lieutenant General Arthur Percival raised the white flag. Britain's Prime Minister Winston Churchill called it the worst disaster and greatest capitulation in British history. But for the 130,000 Allied troops taken prisoner, including 15,000 Australians, there was worse to come. Much worse. They spent the rest of the war enduring brutality and starvation as POWs in Singapore's Changi camp and later on the hellish Thai Burma Railway. 8,000 Australians would never come home. For decades after the war, there was much finger pointing over just who was to blame for the fall of Singapore. In 1993, a British wartime report surfaced blaming the defeat on indiscipline and cowardice by Australian soldiers. In a furious retort, then Prime Minister Paul Keating said the claims were beyond the bounds of decency and credibility. He had earlier accused Britain of abandoning Australia during the war. The fall of Singapore, commemorated each year by an ever-dwindling number of survivors, encouraged Australia to look increasingly towards the United States for its future protection. It was looking across the Pacific even harder when, just four days after the Singapore surrender, Japanese warplanes bombed Darwin. The fall of Singapore was a military defeat with profound strategic consequences.